I was at a conference in San Diego and I remember being, I, I had about five hours before I had my flight. And I'm sitting there by myself, the game's on, waves are crashing, 75 and beautiful, and I get the call from Shark Tank and she says, um, just wanna let you know that we reviewed everything and we'd like to have you on the show. Everything seemed right. Everything was absolutely perfect the way it happened. At the same time, she kept saying, you could get cut at any moment. You get cut tomorrow, you get cut in a week, in a month. Every time that we did something, we had to make sure it was so great that we, that we wouldn't get cut. The day of shooting was a full-blown disaster. Um, we were supposed to shoot um, at three o'clock. Antonio was supposed to show up at about noon so we, we could have about two and a half hours to actually prepare together to see what would happen. And three o'clock came and there was no Antonio. Four o'clock came, there was no Antonio. Five o'clock came, there was no, no Antonio. And all of a sudden quarter of six comes and they say the sharks have been here for three days. They're exhausted and they want to go home, but they'll do one more taping. If you want it, you can have it. It was extremely surreal. I was standing there. You stand there for about 30 seconds before you even say a word. And I'm sitting there just like looking at all of me and like I'm actually here right now. This is, this whole thing is like all the time of wanting to be on the show is now like actually happening right now. I started my pitch and I said, hey sharks, my name is. And apparently as soon as I said that, my phone rang in the back. Um, it was Antonio. The producer, she went out and got in the golf cart, went to the front of the studios, grabbed him, brought him back, threw him in the slides, threw him in makeup, and then walked out 25 minutes into our pitch when it was a complete and utter surprise that I didn't even know if he was even gonna come or not. The pitch was going really well, and then the valuation came up, and like I knew they were gonna hate the valuation because they hate all valuations. You're asking us to pay today for tomorrow's value. It's yeah. just nutsy. You're too optimistic, I'm out. I understand, thank you. In six months, we went from concept to market, opening up malls, getting inventory, wear testing, everything. We're able to have guys like this who believe in it, who are the most elite athletes in the world. I backed it up, I believed in it. Um, I wish I said some things differently. I said some things that, um, I could have phrased some things differently for them to like truly get the vision. What specifically do you think? Um, I think that our, our like our sales approach and like why we're different and how we're different and, and our process and how it is so unique. And that's a big company I know does not want to do what we do because it is so labor intensive. And coming from a big company, I could have expressed that much more clear to them. You want to build a shoe company. 100%. To get to that, you got to start doing the mass appeal type of licenses. I've negotiated those Disney, DreamWorks licenses, once in a lifetime kind of deals. I'll give you the 500,000, I'll give it to you for 20%. We've been very lucky to have great investors and great advisors from day one. And one of our investors has 25 plus years of licensing experience. And funny enough, a week after the show aired, we were sitting in Disney's studio pitching them for licensing. So I um, negotiated 500000 for 10%. And at that point, Robert was already getting bullied by the other sharks of like, what a stupid offer you made anyway. 25 times cash flow for a tchotchke company. Are you out of your mind? The way that I've seen Robert go back and forth is, He's very tight on like his offer if nobody else is in. If somebody else is in, he'll definitely like go the extra mile to really get the deal if he wants it, which I definitely believed he really wanted this deal, but he was already getting razzed enough where like he wasn't gonna move and we weren't gonna move after we negotiated, you know, a better deal for them. 500,000, 20%, I'm, I'm done at that number. Final offer, Justin. Um, 
I just can't thank you enough for the offer, Robert. I can't believe I'm watching this. I cannot, and I'm, I'm truly sorry. So walked away, and I more so got emotional because I felt that I let the team down. And that's what hurt like more than anything. So I call them and I tell them the story. I call the office, they're all sitting by the phone. I tell them the whole story and they're like, yeah, of course you didn't take it. Like we would have been pissed if you took it. And I was, that was like the biggest relief I could have ever heard was like them knowing and understanding and like being like, yes, of course you could have never taken that deal. So it aired that night. We were ready. We went to um, a restaurant to have a viewing party. We washed it all. Everybody like celebrated for a minute and then we all went back to the office and we ended up answering phone calls, answering emails, um, printing, and 24 hours nonstop all weekend. We went from 500 people a day coming to our site to 50,000 a day. It wasn't even just the sales that we got that night or the exposure or the, or the um, web traffic, but now there'd be companies and buyers or investors that now wanted to meet just to talk about the show.